Hey everybody, welcome back. We're doing another Quran annotation review. We will do the whole annotation review and then get into the Sahih International Quran. Um, before we get started, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alright, so we are in Al Hijr, Surah 15, picking up on verse sign Ayat number 39. Iblis said, O my Lord, because thou hast put me in the wrong, I will make wrong fair seeming to them on the earth, and I will put them all in the wrong. And then on 42, For over my servants no authority shalt thou have, except such as put themselves in the wrong and follow thee. And what I like about that one is, he doesn't have authority. So it's like, I think our Hollywood version of Satan that a lot of we Americans think is that he has equal power to create and manifest and we kind of get too much into the the witches we think oh the witches is going to do this and that and send curses after us and there's a lot of a uh, very depressed nihilistic we call them black eye nihilists who really want to get into the dark arts because they got mom issues. Some of them, they, they don't eat a lot. They're very pasty colored. And they just seem really depressed. And a lot of them really think that they will gain some type of favor from the Dark Lord by acting in certain ways. So, again, what I like about the Quran is that it makes it plain. He doesn't have authority over you. It's pretty much a trickster is going to lead you astray and it's going to hurt you in the next dimension when it comes to the accounting so it's not really worth it right 244 to it are seven gates for each of those gates is a special class of sinners assigned the righteous will be amid gardens and fountains of clear flowing water their greeting will be enter ye here in peace and security and again what i like about this is peace and security because that's how you know you're in a good place is, you know, when there's peace and security. Right now, we don't have peace or security. And the constant anxiety is, uh, it is a challenge. It's quite different. It makes me really kind of sometimes appreciate the little moments I had as a kid, like walking by train tracks and laying in the grass under the really big trees that my grandma had. I just... There's so much chaos in the Democrat big cities, man. It's really sad. Very sad. And we shall remove from their hearts any lurking sense of injury. They will be brothers joyfully facing each other on thrones of dignity. There no sense of fatigue shall touch them, nor shall they ever be asked to leave. The lurking sense of injury, what's unique about that is I sometimes I like to imagine... My grandma, my mom, and all of them made it. I mentioned this last time. They would be in their pure form, and so would I. And it makes me wonder what that would be like. Right? Who would you be? What would we be like? It's quite interesting to think about. Tell my servants that I am indeed off forgiving, most merciful, and that my penalty will be indeed the most grievous penalty. Tell them about the guests of Abraham. And then on 52, when they entered his presence and said, Peace, he said, We feel afraid of you. Oh, and then uh, Luth, Luth underlined his name on 59. 74, and we turned the cities upside down and rained down on them brimstone, hard as baked clay. Again, what's interesting about that is even though the brimstone's coming from the sky, when just the creator mentioning, you know, turning the city upside down. Uh, that is definitely happening now in our country. And it's happening by atheist communists and uh, fanatical socialists. It's very quite sad. There was a very tragic, it's just, just so much crime going on. It's, it's horrible. Truly horrible what's happening. 
people's lives are being ruined. 89. And say, I am indeed he that warneth openly and without ambiguity of such wrath as we sent down on those who divided scripture into arbitrary parts. And then on 95, for sufficient are we unto thee against those who scoff. Again, that's helpful too, right? Uh, you, if you feel like, you know, you're getting scoffed at, like, oh, someone's just, that can feel weird sometimes. Like, for example, one of my coworkers had a, uh, a gator, they call it, you know, because we have to wear masks at work. But his gator went high and he had a hat and one of the co-workers, I was wearing my hijab and I have my mask so all you can kind of see is my eyes sort of like him and she goes, oh you look like a ninja and I kind of, like the way she said it was like as I know she doesn't really care for me too much it's kind of like a little bit of a dig and it's, it's really weird how some of them like they will like, oh aren't you hot in that? and it's like it's really weird comments I get from some people now that I've been wearing the hijab every day to work. Sometimes it's a little weird, but I think in my head, you know, it doesn't matter, it's for Allah. Let them think what they want to think. You know what I mean? And now we're in Nahal, or the B, and this is one of my favorite sections. It's really one of my favorites that I listen to a lot on repeat. So on 16, and marks and signposts. And by the stars, men guide themselves. That's true. The North Star, remember, remember giving that example how when the slaves were trying to escape in the South, they used the stars to guide them out. And if you're on the sea as well, I believe, right? Back then. 18. If ye would count up the favors of Allah, never would ye be able to number them. For Allah is not forgiving, most merciful. Indeed. Right? 19. And Allah doth know what ye conceal and what ye reveal. 23. He loveth not the arrogant. I've been doing good on not being too arrogant. In politics, you got to be a little bit potent towards each other because that's the fun about politics and that's how it works. But when it comes to like being at work, I don't strut anymore and I, I just am very humble. I've really worked on it. Really seen a lot of improvement. Especially when I've been around a couple arrogant people and sometimes when someone else is arrogant I like Start getting adrenaline and I start feeling hot like I want to be rude and have the energy and go like bring the force, you know But I haven't been doing it like strutting like a rooster, you know, I used to be walk really cocky Now it's kind of just more still having that peace. I don't I really like it 26 those before them did also plot against Allah's way. But Allah took their structures from their foundations, and the roof fell down on them from above, and the wrath seized them from directions they did not perceive. These are some of my favorites. Really, truly. Because it gives you hope that no matter how evil certain regimes are, or certain factions and insurrectionists and just people who enjoy chaos and destruction and causing pain that they think they're going to gain power but you just have a limited term appointed right 29 so enter the gates of hell to dwell therein thus evil indeed is the abode of the arrogant 30 to the righteous when it is said what is it that your lord has revealed they say all that is good to those who do good, there is good in this world, and the home of the hereafter is even better and excellent indeed is the home of the righteous. 34. But the evil results of their deeds overtook them, and that very wrath at which they had scoffed hemmed them in. Hem them in, you know, like, whoosh, ooh, like when you fix something, you hem it, right? It pulls it. That's a very cool way to phrase it, man. 41. To those who leave their homes in the cause of Allah after suffering oppression, we will surely give them a goodly home in this world. But truly the reward of the hereafter will be greater if they only realize this. You know, I've been thinking about... I know that it says that you leave your homes in the, for the cause of Allah, for like, kind of implies wartime. 
but at the same time, I think it's time we leave California. This place is a very disturbing place, and it's only, I think it's the new Sodom and Gomorrah. I think it always has been. But there is so much debauchery, crime, decay in this place, and Silicon Valley, Napa, and the financial district in San Francisco, and Hollywood and LA, those little pockets make it seem like California is so good. But when you look around at the culture here, just, you know, sex, drugs, music, homelessness, gangs, it's just very, you know, very bad. They had a, it's just, I, so I think when, how I look at it now is we should leave this place and go to a better state where there's family values, where there's not the drug culture and the nightclub culture and the hookup culture where everyone has sex with everyone. I think it's we have to abandon this place. People are fleeing New York. There was a huge U-Haul lines in NYC. People are leaving, and I think that you know they're leaving because the the virus is causing a you know economic collapse. But I think it's time we leave this state. I'm saving up to leave. I think everyone who is a good person, I think we should leave and abandon California. I really do.